my name is Bruce. I work with Unite for the Environment. Unite for the Environment is a program of the North Carolina Zoo and we operate in Bigodi, Uganda. At Unite, we do work with communities around Kiwa National Park. Uh, this park is a biodiversity hotspot and we have so many wildlife species that live in the park. These include elephants, chimpanzees, and so many others. At Unite, we train teachers, and through these trainings, we empower communities with sustainable living programs. Today, we are going to look at how we can build a shielded, fuel-efficient stove. When constructing a shielded stove, you need a number of materials, and these include uh, grass, then you also need water, and subsoil, and then uh, a banana stem. Uh, but we also need um, other materials or things which can help you, like a panga, a measuring tape, then um, a hole, which is mostly used for mixing the soil, and then um, a cooking pot. The cooking pot is not specific, it depends on the family size. The size of the family is big, use relatively bigger um, cooking pot like this one. This is for a family of five to seven. Or if the family is smaller, then you may use a smaller cooking pot. We chop the grass into one to two inch sized pieces. And once the grass is chopped, then uh, we measure different basins or we put on a basin and mix with the soil in a ratio of one to one. So today we're going to mix nine basins of soil and nine basins of grass. Once the mixture is done, then we now I use the hoe and continue to mix the grass while pouring water. We also pour the water. Continue mixing until when the mixture is very fine. So we continue adding grass as we do the mixture. Okay, so now we are determining the base of the stove. Uh, the base of the stove has to be the diameter of the cooking pot plus 15 centimeters thickness, which is a standard thickness for the shielded stove. The base also has to be 10 centimeters from the ground. So once you determine the base, now you add the banana stems for the combustion chamber. You add three stems at different sizes. Uh, the horizontal stem is for allowing a firewood, while the one which is vertical is for allowing the fire to go up the cooking pot. The second horizontal stem is to allow free flow of oxygen in the combustion chamber. So once you place the pan or the cooking pot there, we are now going to add our mixture of mud. We are going to add a mixture of mud until when the stems, all the stems are covered and even when the cooking pot is covered. So we have added mud up to the, uh, we have covered the cooking pot. Now we have to measure and make sure that the thickness is 15 centimeters. Because uh, the more the thickness, uh, the better it is for the stove. So once that is done, uh, we have to smoothen the stove using a banana stem. The smoothening is very, very important because 
stops the water from being absorbed by the stove. Say when you're cooking and then the water overflows, um, if it's a smooth surface, the water does not get into the stove. So smoothening is very important for the preventative maintenance of the stove. Now the smoothening is completed, uh, we remove the cooking pot as we complete the smoothening. And after removing the cooking pot, we now insert or fix the pot stands. The pot stands are fixed to allow free air and heat saturation. After the cooking pot is all fixed, we now leave it to dry, we leave the shaded stove to dry for a month, and then after a month, the banana stems decompose and shrink. So once they decompose and shrink, we remove them, and then the shaded stove is ready for use. Mm -hmm. Now over.